What's going on guys, John the Video Guy here. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about video design and career building. So in today's video, I have to go over something that's a common problem in After Effects. And you'll notice this if you're working with gradients a lot. And it's called banding. We're gonna take a look in this tutorial at a few ways to fix this. So an important note in this video tutorial, it's gonna be procedural. So I'm gonna start off with a few tips at the beginning and feel free to uh, see how that works. And if it does work, then that's good. You can click off. But if that doesn't work, keep watching this video because I'm gonna go step by step on what I would do first through the end to try to fix this problem. As always, feel free to hit the like button. Uh, consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. I post twice a week on a Monday and a Thursday. And with that, let's get started with this tutorial. So I'm inside After Effects here, and to illustrate this problem, I made a composition and I made a new solid and I applied a basic ramp. And this is just a two second animation where the ramp kinda comes in and goes out. And I export this out and this is what we have. So a quick disclaimer guys, I know this is on YouTube so it's kinda hard to, it's hard for me to realize how this looks on your end, but on my end I can see some definite uh, banding happening. So this is just a normal MP4 and if we pause this here, and we go here, you can kind of see the banding occurring in this gradient wherein it goes from black to white here in the grays. All right, so the first thing I would recommend doing inside After Effects to try to solve this problem is to change the color space. So to do that, inside After Effects in the project window, you can click on this button down here and you can change the depth from 8 bits to 16 or 32. What you can also do is change the working space as well from none to something such as sRGB. And also not only that, but you can also check this box that says linearized working space. And if you read the bottom here, it'll say working space sRGB will be linearized, linearized. This affects all pixel blending operations, including blending modes, imagery, sampling, and motion blur. A linear working space more accurately reflects how colors blend naturally and may correct Halos infringing when high contrasted saturated colors are blended together. So you can see that this might solve that issue. Now, one note about checking this box is it will mess up all your RGB values inside your project. If you go to like say any type of um, color palette, you'll notice this looks completely different now. So just make note of that before you check that box. So this is the first step and if we do this and we uh, render it out. This usually works for most high performance codecs, like if you're working in Apple ProRes, but you might still notice some issues when you use this and you still export at an MP4. So what else can we do? Well, the second thing I would recommend if you're exporting an MP4 in the H.264 codec, I highly recommend increasing the bit rate if you're having problems with gradients. So to do that, say if we were gonna export this out We'll add it to the render queue and we'll just hit Q and AME. And under here, what you can do is change the bit rate when you click on the settings. If you scroll down here, you'd see the target bit rate. And you can change this to something a little higher, maybe 45. And if you want more information on bit rates, I actually made another video, I'll link it up here, that goes into more depth on what bit rates are and how they work. We'll just see how this works. So hit save and render. All right, that's a lot better compared to this guy. So just by changing the bit, the bit depth, the color space, and linearizing it, and also adding a high bit rate, you can see there's a lot of, uh, it, it did the trick almost. So there you go, that's what I would recommend so far. All right, so what other things can you do if, say, if all these options don't work? And this is when we really start to dive. Hopefully those work, but if it didn't, then continue watching. I have a few more tricks up my sleeve that I wanna show you guys in case you're having some real difficulties with those gradients. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about, which most tutorials will show if you uh, search this on how to fix blending or banding, is to actually add noise or some type of scatter to the actual gradients that you're affecting. So if you go into ramp here, and if you click on this, you'll notice an option you have is ramp scatter. And you can increase this 
say maybe up to 100 and that might do the trick as well not only that but what you can do is add noise so if you go to layer new adjustment layer and say if you go to effects and presets what you can type in is noise and you can add some noise I won't go too crazy here if we zoom in here you can kind of see the effects but basically what this is doing is adding some type of pattern or basically overlay that kind of disrupts the banding as it renders out and gets compressed. And the other thing, other than noise, you can add grain. So, you know, grain, this is a little bit more, this is a little bit more render intensive. So I would recommend using noise over grain, but you can adjust these settings kind of like 0.1, take down the size a little bit. And if we change to final output, you can kind of see we kind of have some, you know, difference in grain added to the image. So those are a few things that you can do on top of not only changing the bit rate and the color space. All right, so say if you want to get rid of the banding, but you don't want to add noise to your project. Well, this last and final tip should solve your problem if none of the things before worked. I have to thank Taryn from Linus Tech Tips and actually uh, finding this type of technique. And I'll link his video down below. And what he basically did is spent an hour actually experimenting different things on how to get rid of posturizing, posturizing inside video or video banding. And one of the things that he did is he tried experimenting with different textures and basically added it over the footage in the composition or the, sorry, the gradient in the composition and adjusted the blending mode and the opacity to try to get it to disrupt the banding and export it out. And it did a really nice job at diffusing that banding. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to create the pattern or the texture to overlay. But if you don't wanna learn how to create the pattern or texture and you just wanna get straight to the point, I downloaded, or actually I created my own texture. I'll have it down in the video description Feel free to go and download that and add it to your project. And right now I'm going to show you how to create it from scratch, but feel free to skip forward and see how to apply it in your composition. So first we'll go into Photoshop to actually create the texture. And what we're doing is basically creating a pattern and then adding it to another layer that's bigger. So we'll create the RGB pattern and we'll make this three pixels by three pixels and click create. And it's really small, so we'll just make it bigger. What we'll do is grab our rectangle tool and we'll just click and make it one pixel by one pixel. Click OK, hit Command T and reposition this to the top left, hit Enter and then right click, hit Duplicate Layer and then hit Command T and move it out and then change the color to another RGB, so maybe blue and then duplicate this hit Command T, move it over, and then change this value to green. And you can kind of see what, what we're doing here. Hit duplicate again. All right, the next part's important. You want to offset these RGB values. So maybe we do something like this, where you know the red's off centered to the right a little bit. and the green is off-centered as well. That way, when if you didn't do this and you didn't offset the pattern, um, you'll get basically vertical lines happening. So we're trying to mix this up as much as possible. So work it until you have something like this, and then the next step is go to Edit, Define Pattern. And we'll just name this RGB Pattern and click OK. And then the next thing we'll do is go to File New, and we'll create our texture, basically. I'll just name this 4K Texture. And we'll make this 4,000 by 4,000. That way you can pretty much add this over anything. And then with this layer selected, go to Edit, Fill, and then make sure you change this from foreground color to pattern and make sure that your RGB pattern is selected and click OK. And what this did is it basically made, if we zoom all the way in here, it made that pattern. And we zoom out. And then what we're gonna do is save this, and we'll save this as a JPEG. 
we'll click OK. All right, so next we're going to add this into our composition. So inside After Effects, go to Project. We will drag and drop this 4K texture. And we will overlay it on top of our ramp. And what we're going to do is hit T on the keyboard. We'll bring the opacity down to 10. And we'll toggle switches, go back to Mode, and change it to Overlay. And if we zoom in here, you'll see kind of what it does. You can kind of see it a little bit here. But trust me, when you render it out, you probably won't notice it. And what this basically accomplishes, it's like grain or noise, but it doesn't move. And that's the big thing. If you don't want to add noise or grain to your project, this is a good way to still diffuse the banding in the video when it exports. And just to show how powerful this is, I'm going to change it back to 8 and uncheck this and go to none for the workspace and click OK. And we'll export this out. And I'm not even going to change the bitrate. I'm going to show you how this looks just with the texture out and compare it to the original. Click OK. Click play. And we'll see how powerful this is. So there you go. I mean, this looks pretty good and this is how it looks. So as I said earlier, I'm not sure how this will look on YouTube, but you know, compared to the original, this has done the trick a lot. I guess you could try this first, but this is kind of a last resort because you know, you are adding a, a weird artificial texture to your end result. You know, you can try it bits per channel first, see if that works. Like I said, change the working space, the color, because that's not actually adding a foreign element into your project. So I do still recommend doing that first. But if all else fails, hopefully this works for you. Feel free to drop a comment below if something worked or if you even have something you want to share that you've tried that works with banding. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn more about After Effects, I actually made a playlist. I'll link it up here. Feel free to go check it out. I have a lot of cool motion graphic design tutorials on there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.